and get started. All right. Thank you guys for jumping on our weekly Zoom call. Um, tonight we are actually talking about um, coaching calls. And coaching calls is something that if you are a lead consultant, you are a leader and you should be doing coaching calls with your downline, whether you have one or whether you have 10 or 100, whatever that is. When we talk about frontline, Frontline is who you personally sponsor. Downline is people underneath the people that you personally sponsor. Um, team is where you are the director of or in um, many people's cases, whoever is in your team that makes up. Like, so everyone underneath you makes your team. Um, and then we won't go into groups because that's not what we're going to talk about because it's all about coaching your frontline, which is the main priority, and then teaching them to do the same. And we get asked a lot about how do you teach your, you know, your, your team or your frontline to do the same? It is all by example. And there will be times where you feel like you are the only person in your entire team doing the, like doing all the things and no one, you might feel like no one else is doing it, but it will, one day you'll be surprised at who's doing it with you that you weren't aware of. And you know, your business will just, you know, Please. snowball and you just be like, what is going on? And then when you reach out to them, they've been doing these good things this whole time. Um, and so that's what we're getting into. So we're going to screen share and we're going to get right into it. All right. Okay, so uh, Nikki, because we can see you. Can you see the screen share? Yeah. PowerPoint. Can you see the PowerPoint? Can you see the PowerPoint? Yes. Yes. Okay, awesome. Thank you. All right. So we are talking all about coaching calls. So one thing before you start, one thing that I would, we I read early on in our Sensi business when we first started um, was a book called Network Marketing Pro mm -hmm. by Eric Worre. And going off what Cindy just said, he, his secret to success, he said, was to do small, consistent things every day and to teach other people to do the same. And so that is what the essence of coaching calls ultimately is. We're going to go through today how that works. Yeah, and how that looks like. Okay. So I don't even know how to move the slideshows. Okay, so who should we coach? Um, so like I said, that your main priority is your front line. So again, your front line is people that you have personally sponsored. Um, when you look at your workstation, it will be people on your reports tab that has a one next to it. Um, we get asked all the time, should that be the only people that you um, coach? They should be your priority, okay? Because you are their sponsor, but Sometimes you will have someone on your front line that might not necessarily want to work the business or might not necessarily want to do leadership things. And where it's important is that where you, that you kind of step in, um, always, you always give the opportunity to your um, teamie to do the coaching. You always invite them to be a leader. You always invite them to do the activity. But at the end, if they say to you, hey, look, this is not what I want to do, it's important that you step in and you try and you you try and you support their team as much as you possibly can. Yeah. I think you misread the question. Who should oh who should do coaching calls? Oh my bad. So Cindy skip forward to the totally. next one. <laughs> Everyone should be this doing coaching slide, calls. Who should do coaching calls? So sometimes you might sit there and think, <laughs> I'm not yet a leader. I've just started doing this and I'm a lead. You get on such a roll. I can't even. I didn't stop even read it. it. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> So sometimes we sit there and we think directors, if you're a director, then you can do a coaching call. Then I'm a leader and I'm a team and I can this. then do coaching calls. The reality of this business is that as soon as you have sponsored someone, as soon as you have a team of more than just you, you have a team and you have a responsibility to, as a sponsor, to give the people on your front line all the tools that they that are necessary for them to be successful. And in doing the coaching calls, you can help them identify what those tools actually are. Yeah. And you're a leader. As soon as yeah. you've sponsored one person, you are a leader. 
Um, so don't think that you need a, a, this title of director to and there is a classify of a, yourself as a leader. A stigma or a culture around that fact. Yeah. that directors are the leaders and everyone else is not the leaders. But the reality is that we're all leaders once we have sponsored someone. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. With that? Yeah. Um, okay. I don't think you even had a slide of who should be, I don't know. Okay. No, so, and um, who, I, I didn't have a slide. So we're just going to go into quickly, like who should you, who should you coach? So um, like I said, um, if you do have a team that doesn't want to do a leadership coaching call, um, it's unfortunate. Is it right? I don't think it is right. I think everyone should be doing coaching calls. Um, and if you haven't been doing them, that's okay. Um, and you can call them what you want. It doesn't. Like, yeah, you can call them one-on-ones. You can call them whatever it is. You might just touch base. But it is a coaching call yeah. is intentional and it is all based one-on-one. So um, a team chat isn't a coaching call. Um, a, you know, a, a Zoom call. A Zoom call isn't a coaching call. It is being more specific and focused based on a particular individual and what they're struggling in their business and how you can help them um, basically coach them through their struggles for them to identify what they need to do to then grow. Um, so um, who should you coach? Um, like I said, frontline first then um, give people the opportunity to coach their doubt their, their own teams. But if they don't, unfortunately, you have to step in and be the support there as much as you possibly can. Because in the perfect world, if everyone does coaching calls, if you coach your front line and they coach their front line and they coach their front line, you should never have to coach anyone outside of your front line. But the reality of the world that we live in and this business and businesses is that not everyone will do coaching calls. Sometimes you might have to go deeper than just your front line. Yeah. And, and sometimes, actually, we'll go into it a bit further, but um, we'll go into that a bit more further. The other thing, so we're going on to this next bit. If you've been here for a while, you will have noticed varying levels of consistency sometimes in the things that we try to do. Yeah, right? absolutely. Because guess what? We're human. <laughs> and we make, we're not as consistent as we would love to be. So we have huge expectations on ourselves we are aware of some of the things that we could do better. We're very aware of a lot of the things that we could do better. And we're very aware that we start a lot of things and we never finish them. But deep down inside, not even that deep, but we really, really, really want to help everyone do the best that they can. And so one of the things that we've identified as we've strived to kind of recommit to coaching calls is the need to be better organized and better have better systems in place to make that be a more consistent thing. So that's going to be part of what we talk about now um, in terms of having the systems in place to allow you to be consistent and to do those coaching calls effectively. And while we're like confessing all the things that we're not good at. Um, it's mainly me. So he's pretty good at everything. <laughs> no. Um, the thing is, is I think it's one of those things where um, I think because it happens so quickly for us, we didn't really ever put systems in place. Um, and we've been coaching, and some of the girls are on here that I've been coaching with at the moment. Um, I realized that they don't have any systems in place because I never had systems in place. And so um, systems, I, and I think that's why I've kind of been all over the place is systems are so important because it allows you, it, it makes a business turn. Um, it makes things work the way it should be. Um, and not everyone has systems, but it's important to have systems because it's not just about being organized, but it's knowing what you have to do that actually works. That's going to, um, help not, not only help other people, but also help your business grow as well. So, um, one of the main things that we found that's really helpful for us is using Calendly. Um, and the reason behind that is you can go into Calendly. I don't know if, I don't know, tell us if you've used it or not in the comments, but um, Calendly is a program that is free. It's on, I don't, I don't know if there's an app or not. I use it on my, um, on my laptop. But basically all you do with Calendly is, um, uh, is, um, sorry, I need to get rid of the comments because it's distracting me. But um, the thing with Calendly is you can, there is someone that's not muted though. You can mute yourself. Um, okay. 
you're not muted. Yeah. Because right now, because the speaker. Maybe just on screen. Really frustrating. I'm out. Okay. So, how to book? Um, so, Calendly. The great thing about that is that you can actually go on there. You can tonight and the session times to book it in. I always book in um, coaching calls for 30 minutes, but my coaching calls are 20 minutes. Um, on there, that you can also explain like descriptions of what it is. Um, you can go in there and um, change anything that you want to change. Um, you can put, um, you know, it doesn't show anything else in your calendar. You can just say, look, I'm free between um, Monday from 7 to 9 p.m. I'm going to put in 20 minutes, a half an hour sessions, and people can go in and book. And then what happens is it automatically generates an email to your email that says such and such is booked at this time. Um, you can pay for a little, like, the pro version, which then gives um, you options if someone cancels, it sends automatic reminders to people. But I haven't paid for the pro because um, talk about consistency, right? So um, I just put in the description that they actually have to call me and I put my phone number in there. And it's up to the person that I'm coaching to show that they're, um, you know, that they're serious of not only um, my uh, knowledge, but also my time. And it allows me to realize how, you know, how committed they are to our coaching call because it's their job to call me at the time of their call. Um, and if they don't do that, then I don't chat to them. I don't pick up the phone. Yes, I have access to their phone number on the workstation, but I want to know when people are serious. I want committed people that I'm coaching my time because I think the more I'm getting older, the more I realize that time is one of those resources that you cannot get more of, right? You can get more sensi, you can get more sensi bars, you can get more warmers, all those things, or like, you know, things, you can get things all the time. But one resource that you cannot gain more of is time. And every time I say no or yes, so every time I say yes to someone, that's less time with my family. Every time I say no to someone, um, what's that? You'll fill it with something else. I'll fill it with something else. And so if I'm, um, if I'm saying no, if I'm saying yes to you and no to my family, I'm prioritizing you over my family. And I want to make sure that you are not going to waste my time. And I, when I say you, I'm talking about this is when you're thinking about doing your own coaching calls. You need to make sure that who you're coaching is not going to waste your time, um, that they're respectful of your time. Because, I mean, it's still half an hour out of your day. Um, or out of your night, where, whenever you kind of want to put it. And so you want to make sure that they're not going to waste your time and not be disorganized. And that will bring us, I think, to our next little Let's section. But this. Calendly is honestly a really great way to, for people to book into your, your calendar. And the really great thing is one of the best things Andrew did a, a little while ago is he actually set up our calendars on Google. Is it Google? I think so, yeah. And so anytime I, anything goes to my emails and it's a event, it actually automatically updates my, uh, my iPhone calendar and it puts everything in there. And it actually reminds me automatically one, one day before and one hour prior to an event or anything. So I don't have to go back into my calendar and go in and manually enter it into my um, phone calendar. It just does it automatically for me, which is like, really handy um, and it's again it's all about efficiency and it's just working really well and then Andrew actually has access to my calendar and he knows he can't put anything on at those times because I have something on because he can see my calendar in real time let's too. be honest I'm not allowed to put anything on ever no he doesn't put anything on um, okay so what to talk about um, I was coaching someone earlier this week and one of the things that she wants to improve herself in is actually coaching calls as well. Um, and she was like, one of the biggest things that I'm struggling with is what to coach someone on. Um, and I ended up, I don't know if um, Paul is on here, but we ended up doing a um, course with Sensi as SSDs where we learned about coaching calls and how to do them. And one of the biggest things, like aha moments for me, and I don't know if this is anything that's gonna be new for you guys, but there's a difference between coaching and teaching. And right now we're having like a teaching experience, right? Where, where we are, sh are teaching you guys about a topic. And I was talking to this particular consultant earlier in the week and I said, you know, there's a difference between teaching and coaching. Teaching is you doing all of the talk, you, 
them what to do, you um, giving them all the ideas. Coaching is very different. Coaching, what happens with coaching, you are asking them the right questions to get them to think about what it is that they're going to do. So it's, you know, so for an example, you might have someone that says, oh, look, it's been a little while since I've, I, you know, I haven't been able to meet new customers and I don't know what to do. What should I do? And then my question to them would be, okay, so what have you been doing? And then they would list it off. They might realize that they actually haven't done a lot of things. So, and one of the things is as they list off, you say, and what else have you done? And what else have you tried? And you get them to, you're basically asking questions. They're the ones doing all of the talking when it comes to coaching. Um, and so that's something I think that you, it's really important to realize because we get intimidated by doing coaching calls because we think we have to say, and that you have to have all the answers. Yeah, but you don't. So, you know, if you're a lead consultant and you signed up two weeks before your other cons before your teamie, it's not about knowing everything. It's just asking them the questions like, where are you going to find that? So what else are you going to do? What are you going to try? It's just questions that allows them to sit back and think of the answers themselves. And that's what a coaching call really is. So we were talking about this earlier tonight, right? And we were saying how the... Oh, I've just got the biggest blank ever in the world. I do that all the time. The biggest role. What yeah. were we talking about? We're talking about how, um, oh, that's right. So when we're doing things, right, going off what Cindy was saying, our goal is to help as, co as leaders in the coaching call is to help other people identify the behaviours that they need to be doing more of, right? Yeah. Helping them identify it. So they need to come up with the, re with the things that they need to do better. Um, and the bottom line is, is that they do it to me all the time. When they identify what it is that is, you know, missing in their business or what needs to happen, it's a different type of accountability. Like if you're the one telling them what's wrong, I was saying to Andrew, like, it's almost like, it, like coaching calls can be almost like, I don't know, intimidate, not inti yeah, intimidating because it's like, how do you sit there? I know for me, this is what held me back from coaching calls was how do I sit there and tell someone? Because I, there's a lot of things that you can tell by someone's workstation. So much. Like you can tell so much by their numbers, their PRV, their recruiting. Like I can tell who works their business and who doesn't. And you can too, when you're looking at your reports, and it's not, it's not hard to kind of realize what numbers pop out and what's really important to kind of be tracking. And it's, I said to him, it's kind of scary. Like, how do you say to someone, Hey, you suck at you, this. you're not very good at this. Like, right. And so it can be really intimidating and that's where coaching um, and if you ask the right questions, you're not saying that. They're discovering that themselves. Um, they're identifying their weaknesses and they're identifying how they're going to fix it. So the thing is, right, is that in life and in Sensi, we know our weaknesses, right? Yeah. We all know what we're not very good at. If you sat down and thought for five minutes about your Sensi business and wrote down three things that you could do better in, we could write that list pretty quickly, 100%. right? It wouldn't be a hard list to write. Um, and so we were talking about this tonight before the call and we were saying that we had some coaching from Jason Harwood yeah. um, a couple of years ago Star now. directors, yeah. And he told us that when we're doing things, we're either doing and we're not experiencing success, right? When we're doing things, we're not having the success that we're looking for. It's either because we're doing the wrong thing or we're doing the right thing, but we're not doing enough of it. Yeah. And basically, when we have a coaching call, all we're looking to do, all people really want is some confirmation that we're heading in the right direction. That if I double down on the things that I'm doing right now, that, that will help me improve where I'm at in my business. Yeah. And sometimes, you just need someone else to tell you that. Yeah. And that's what's great about this. The Sensi business is not a complex business. And so if you can identify your weaknesses, you know the behaviours that you need to do to fix those things. It's just a matter of doing more sometimes of those things. Yeah. And that brings us to what to talk about, um, which is the three legs of success. So when it comes to coaching, you, there's three legs um, that are really important. One, the first leg is PRV. Um, the second leg is uh, sponsoring and the third leg is um, coaching. Those are the three legs of success that you need. 
master all three, you're, in, you're heading in the right direction. Now, you can't move from one to two until you've mastered one. You can't move from two to three until you've mastered two, right? So if you're PRV, when you're looking at someone and they you know, they have, let's say, 200 PRV um, and uh, they have 200 PRV, if they are a leader or they have, they're a lead consultant, um, if they don't have 500 in, your whole coaching call is going to be based around their sales system. What are you doing in your sales? Like, what sales system do you have? What have you created? What do you work off of? What are you doing right now to get PRV? What bookings do you have? How are you getting bookings? How are you meeting new people? And that is basically all you're going to be talking about in their coaching. Are you taking advantage of all of the sales opportunities? All the LTOs, all, all the Sensi marketing Club, things. All of the marketing things. And that's where your coaching call will be based on. Now, if their PRV is over 500, I would love, like I said to, to Andrew, I am the mastering like uh, minimum for me is 2,000 PRV. Um, if you're growing a seri serious business, you need to be getting over 2000. And the reason behind that is it means that you are talking to enough people to continue to sponsor and you're talking to enough people to have a healthy sales base. Um, and so the minimum for me is 2000. So if they have anything under 2000, I'm going to be focusing on sales with them. Once they've mastered the 2000 PRV, we then move on to sponsoring, right? So they can't move from one until they've got two until they, they can't move to two until they've mastered number one. The second leg is um, sponsoring, right? Um, and the minimum for me, I think, is two a month. Once they've mastered how to do that um, two a month consistently after two to three um, months, then we move on to coaching, how to train and coach the people that they've brought into the business. Um, so again, Which is essentially just this. Which is just this, yeah. Um, so then again, if they are onto the sponsoring, your coaching will be, what is your sponsoring system? What are you doing every week to sponsor? How are you meeting new people? It's, and again, it's you are asking them the question. They're giving you the answer. And if they say, look, I don't really know how to meet new people. Okay, so where are you going to, you know, where are you going to find some inspiration about how to meet new people? Well, I was wondering you could, if you could help me. You know what? That's your challenge this week is to go and find some training, some really good trainings on how to grow your customer base. So again, you aren't giving them the answer. You're getting them to be independent, to take responsibility for their business and to go and find the answers themselves. Um, because again, that shows commitment to what it is that they're doing right now, which is growing a strong um, business. Okay, so that's the three legs of the success. And those are the three things that you're going to be talking to them. And that's it. That's, that's all that's businesses. All, yeah. All businesses, those three People things. People get kind of caught up in everything else. You just need those three things to be working perfectly and mastering all three areas to have a very healthy business. And as you master one, it will automatically flow into the next one. Yeah. Okay, so how to identify the weaknesses. So uh, we have some Google Forms. So as soon as someone books into a coaching call, what happens is I message them a link to a Google Form. And I don't know if you can actually probably screen share the Google Forms. Should we show them one? Can you do that? Is that easy or not? Um, but each, each um, we have a Google Form for every um, ranking or title. Um, and each one is different to the other because they focus on different things. Um, so, for instance, let's see if Andrew's going to try and pull up our Google Forms. Um, but he will, if you guys want, uh, let us know and we are happy to share the links up on the GVT. Um, you can create your own. But Google Forms is pretty easy to do. It's how do you create a Google Form? Do you just Google Google Forms? <laughs> it's pretty easy. It's pretty easy. Does it's pretty them. easy when someone else. So how do you do it? Um, it is pretty easy. It's pretty straightforward. But I think we can actually share these forms, I believe. Somehow. Is that we got them? Um, <laughs> let's just look at certified consults, lead consults. Let's go lead. Yeah. And so each one looks slightly different. Are you screen sharing or not yet? Not yet. Oh, yeah. So. I'm going to show you a Google form. This is our lead one. And so what happens is they have... 
I, I normally, as soon as they book in, I send it to them and they have to complete this form 24 hours prior to our coaching call. If the form is not completed 24 hours before our coaching call, to me, it shows me that they're not committed to, um, to what it is that we're doing. And so I then cancel the call and reschedule for another time. Um, so they miss out on that time slot and um, purely because to me, I want people that are committed, that are to my time but I also want to respect their time and focus on the things that they really need help with and this Google form helps them to identify what it is that they need help with and so instead of me getting prepared for like an awkward conversation because I can jump on the workstation and see exactly where someone's struggling this Google form actually allows them I think everyone can see it so we'll show you so we're just going to go through it quickly we can't see anyone that can tell us that we're oh in yeah okay. so I believe we're sharing this. Hopefully so yeah. this here tells you what you did to reach lead consultant. So good job. This is what you're getting. And, and this is directly off the workstation. So all these images are on the workstation. Um, this is what you should know, what rank is, what title is, all the, the kind of terminology that you should know now that you are a lead consultant. This is how you get your next promotion, right? Simple things that are all on the workstation but are easy for them to see here. Yeah, so they're fully aware of, you know, what's required of them to promote or how they got there in the first place. Um, then, then we've got uh, this image of the three legs of success that Cindy was talking about. And a handful of the things. It's all right, you just have to try. What do you want? Take it off, oh, sorry. He said to find out what he wants. He's like his mother. Persistent until he gets what he wants. And then when he gets it, he's fine. So three legs of success, like we were talking about. It's got things that you can do to boost your PRV, sponsoring, coaching, and self-care, which is your responsibility as a person to look after yourself. So hold on. And before you kind of go on, so sales. So these are the things that they need to master. But one of the things is this is just an idea for them when they come onto the call. When we when I say, have you got a sales system? They're like, you know what, I don't have a sales system. This is something that they can go back to, have a look and create their own system. Because here's the thing, we all, our brains all tick differently. We all, um, you know, process things differently. And so some people will be happy with an online system. Other people will be, you know, need pen and paper. Others need, you know, whatever it is your system is. We don't, at the end of the day, it's not what type of system that they're using, but that they have a system that's effective. working and yeah. it's effective. Um, so these again are just areas that to help them with systems to be able to um, master each area before they can move on to the next. Okay. Um, then they just fill out your name, the date that mm -hmm. your call is on. So it's a bit scary if you don't know that date that mm -hmm. you've just booked in. So this is the idea of these questions is it puts the responsibility on the person filling the form out that you're doing the coaching call with that they can be not so sort of accountable for themselves, I guess, um, for these questions. Do you know how to reach your next promotion to start consultant? It's right up here. It says it right there. So the answer is yes. If you can mute yourself, that would be great. Is it? No. I oh, know. It's not really any. Okay. Uh, how are you following up with, oh, sorry, we, we skipped one. Here you go. What's your current PRV and what was last month's PRV? There are, thing, there are things that you should be able to pull up pretty quickly. It will also help us know where you're at with your sales. How, I, how are you following up with your customers? Do you have, what's your system? That's what Cindy's been talking about. How many recruits have you had this month and last month? Is that an area that you could focus on? Maybe focusing more on your PRV will help with that. Um, how many active frontline do you have? Again, that's on the direct on your workstation um and then what is your love language how how do they like to be recognized so that you recognize them after they achieve those things so basically as they test these you know what was your prv this month and last month how many people have you recruited this month and last month they already know where they're struggling you know before they get on the call they know what we're probably going to discuss they know they've identified it in the google forms um, and it allows them to think about that prior to coming onto the call. And it takes away that awkward 
um, conversation that I have to be like, you know, how many people did you recruit? Oh, you know, that's not really enough. They know that it's not enough because they put zero there, right, for the last two months. And they know that that's an area in their, in their business that they need help with. But what we will do is if I look at their PRV first and if their PRV is like, you know, five, I don't know, let's under say four 500, under yeah. 500, I'll be like, you know what? Let's not even talk about sponsoring. Let's talk about your PRV. Let's talk about how we can get that up to 2000 because you're not quite ready to sponsor because you need to have more conversations to have those sponsoring conversations. You need to have more sales to have those sponsoring conversations. It's not going to work unless you're selling. Um, and so this helps them identify it. And so each, um, like each we have ranking a form for each rank. has a different form, different questions. Obviously, the more um, you work your way up the compensation plan, the more the questions you're going to get. Um, and so we found that to be really great um, because it, it just allows us to just know exactly what we're talking about when we get onto the call. Um, and then was there, I think there was one more, wasn't there? Almost, yeah. And then the last little section is accountability. So here's the thing. Um, I always talk to you guys about don't do anything that you can't do. Like don't do something that you're doing with a team of one if you can't do the same thing with a team of 100 or a team of 1,000. And it might seem like a long way away, but one day you will blink and that will be your reality. And you'll be like, how, how do I not only, you know, recognize these, this many people, but how do I keep people accountable? So again, what we do for accountability, and it's actually been working really well, is um, when we set the challenge and we talk about what their tasks are for that, you know, for that week that we're um, coaching them for, it's their job to screenshot it and to send it to me via text or um, if they're overseas in New Zealand via messenger, but they screenshot everything that they do that, you know, once they created their system, while they're working through their system, you know, if they booked a party using their system, it's up to them to take a photo and send it to me. I'm not going to I'm not going to follow up with them. I've given them a time frame that they need to contact me by and let me know that they've done the things that they said that they were going to do and commit to. Um, and it's for them to keep themselves accountable is to send me the proof that they've done it. So at the end of the day, you know, it's their business and they need to not only keep themselves accountable, but be committed to what it is that they want to achieve. Um, and this just helps them do that. So to, for me, having the system of booking, like having my availability up at Calendly allows people to go and book when I know that I'm doing coaching calls, then having the online Google forms allows them to identify and I know exactly what I'm doing. I can check my Google Drive, like if I'm in the car or anywhere and I can do a coaching call wherever I am if I need to, if I, if I don't find that I'm, I'm at home and then having them be accountable, it really takes away a lot of the work when it comes to actually doing the coaching call, um, which I found that when we were trying to do it in the past, it was really hard to keep, you know, I was, I was chasing people up. I you was, taking all I the was, notes, yeah, or... I was taking all the notes. I was contacting them. I, and it was, you know, realistically with the team that we have. And also I'm a mom of four kids, one, with, one with a lot of, that needs a lot of assistance. Of and I don't have time to sit there and, and, and message everyone, even though I want to like, and that's, I want to be able to, to, to have more time. Like, but the thing is, reality is I don't, um, especially with all the things that they have going on in their, in their own lives that I kind of am taking them to and from and doing all the activities and all that kind of stuff. And so I found these three tools to be really um, helpful when it comes to having a better coaching system. The other bottom line of it is, is that we can stop talking, yeah. this business is your responsibility. The coaching calls are nice and they're helpful because they make us accountable to someone. We always feel more pressure when we're accountable to someone, but ultimately we need to be accountable to ourselves and doing the best that we can do and not relying on someone else to drag us to success, right? Yeah. Coaching calls are great, um, but ultimately it's up to you too. Yeah. Um, I just thought I'll just quickly answer Leanne's question. 
Um, no one ever booked in using Calendly for her. Um, so I think if it's something that you're starting to do and, you know, it's something that you haven't offered or you haven't been very, like, consistent at, and honestly, don't be hard on yourself, okay? We just confess that we aren't very good at a lot of things too and we're not oh, very consistent. Things. But the thing is, is it's about starting and improving each day. And if you, you know, make a mistake or you feel crap one week, that's okay. Just get up the next week and do it again. Like it's not a big deal. Um, no one's going to tell you off. No one's going to get upset at you. And if they do, then they don't understand life because, you know, there's so much happening in people's lives. Um, we need to have more um, empathy <laughs> and understanding towards other people. So if you know, you have a director that, you know, is not doing coaching calls that week, maybe because they've got a lot going on and not because they don't care about you. Um, but basically what I would do if you're starting off is I would actually invite some of your people that you would love to really work with on a coaching call um, and maybe, you know, personally reach out to them and say, hey, look, I'm offering coaching calls now. This is the way to book in and I would love to see your name in one of the booking slots. Um, you know, and send them the link and hopefully they will do that. But I find that, you know, personally reaching out to people just makes it a little bit nicer than, you know, even though we did send out an email to our front line, um, it's also still very nice to just, you know, reach out personally to each of them and invite them um, to do that with you. Um, the other thing is, is you don't actually have to be coaching the same people every week because as your team gets bigger, you're not going to be able to have enough time or time slots in the day to be coaching everyone weekly. Okay? Um, you could probably, depending on how big your team is, you can start off with monthly and then move on to, um, is it bi-monthly? Three monthly. And then go into quarterly as your team grows. Because remember, 80% of your time should be on your personal business. Um, you should be working your PRV, sponsoring um, and coaching. But remember, um, you need to be spending a lot more time on, on your personal business. And yeah. Um, and I think that's all we have to share. Um, if you guys have any questions, let us know. We can pop um, the Google Forms up on the GVT if that's helpful.